Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and in this video tutorial we want to talk about paroxysmal transport. Okay, so we've been talking about the transport of proteins from uh, the cytosol into the nucleus, into the mitochondria, chloroplast. Now this one will be how the transport occurs in paroxysm. So once the protein is made, how it will be delivered into the paroxysm. We know paroxysm contains more of a like hydrolyzing proteins, enzymes mostly. And in this case, let's say talk about a catalase. And catalase is a main part, uh, like one of the major enzymes that are present in the paroxysm. So catalase, how exactly catalase is transported inside the paroxysm? That's the first question. So to do that, once the catalase protein is made, like, you know, catalase works with multiple subunit. And most of the enzymes that are working there in paroxysm are multi-subunit enzymes. So there are different subunits produced in the, uh, in the cytosol. Once they're produced, then they are brought inside the paroxysm. And then they're folded back together, linked with each other to make the functional protein. Now here, the job of paroxysmal transport requires again like any other transport signal if you begin with let's say this is the uh, this is the paroxysmal membrane and in the paroxysmal membrane we should have one translocon right for any type of signaling process we should have a translocon which is a channel membrane channel protein which helps to transport a protein right and in this case the translocon is PIX14P that is the name of the translocon while let's say in this case we have our target protein to be delivered so the target polypeptide uh, let's imagine there are this is a four subunit protein so we have a target polypeptide with a simple region known as a pts or paroxysmal target sequence or paroxysmal targeting signal sequence that is unique so once a protein contains this paroxysmal target signal or PTAs that should be delivered into the paroxysm. That is the idea. So once that structure is formed, then what they will do is that there are other proteins. Those are guide proteins. We know once they, they cover uh, the target polypeptide and allow it to slowly interact and pass through the translocon. Now in this case, such PTAs contains PTS receptor proteins. PTS receptor proteins can properly interact with the PTS region of the target polypeptide and can bring it inside. But before doing that, as I told you, like this is a catalase. In, for example, here say this is catalase and this is one subunit of the catalase and we need to fold it to make multi subunit of the catalase. So here the folding, the folding is required and once it start folding like let's say four of such catalases are linked with each other it should be bring close to each other before transferring it through the translocon so here what we do with the help of this pts segments which are facing outside for all these four uh, subunits of the catalase enzyme all of them are held together with heme okay the iron cluster proteins known as the heme regions they hold the structures together that is one way one example of how these multi subunit proteins are getting recognized so once they make this structure you know they have this pts regions in all the side pts and I, as i told you the whole process of delivery of proteins inside the paroxysm will be mediated by this pts and pts receptor protein that is known as pts IR. So that PTS receptor protein has a cycle of moving in and out of the paroxysm. So the idea is the PTS protein, PTS receptor protein are surrounding this place in the cytosol. So once this PTS receptor protein, once the PTS receptor protein binds with it, then this PC, PTS receptor protein goes and interact with the PEX14. PEX14 acts as a PTS response element or PTS binding element as a translocon that will allow the trans this polypeptide to be pulled inside the paroxysm. That is the job. So when you have the PTS identified by the PTSIR, 
then this PTSIR along with the rest of the complex of the polypeptide will interact with PEX14P which is a translocon and then there will be slow transfer of the polypeptides into then there will be the transfer of the polypeptide into the peroxisome. That is the idea of how a protein is transferred inside the peroxisome. And the thing is, you know, this is one case when all the polypeptides arrange themselves to bring in inside the peroxisome. But it may also result like when a small fragment of peptide is transported, such four or other subunits of the polypeptide may be transported. Then they'll join together and make a functional protein inside the peroxisome. That may also result, right? So that in a sense is a delivery of protein inside the peroxisome. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Thank you. So this PTS will bring all the protein complexes inside the peroxisome. So now if you see the target polypeptides and proteins are brought inside the peroxisome, the PTS, the free PTS IR or PTS receptor is now released. Now this PTS receptor with the help of another transporter channel that is present in the peroxisomal membrane, then this PTS can be shuffled back and, and again recycled for the next round of protein delivery inside the peroxisome. So these are the sequential process that keeps on occurring uh, by transporting a protein inside removal of the PTS IR and then again uh, cycling this PTS IR so that it can bind with next round of polypeptides.